a pretty monumental moment in wrestling history. Ric Flair returns to Nitro uh, by 1998. I think most of us remember it. Flair was gone for most of the year, really without any explanation on TV. And the casual fan may not have even known, is he retired? Is he injured? What's going on? Is he going to show up on Raw one night? Behind the scenes, he's embroiled in a bit of a feud with Eric Bischoff. Now that puts his best friend in a bad spot because Arn Anderson is now an agent for WCW. So he's working directly in the office and he's got to sort of toe the company line, but his best friend is, uh, embroiled in a lawsuit or a series of lawsuits with Eric Bischoff. Before we get into the heart of the matter, I should ask you, what's your relationship like with Eric now in 2019? Never really had a crossword with Eric from the beginning all the way through till, till now. Um, there were some things, you know, that, that went on behind the scenes, obviously, that I was not privy to that really was, was stout between he and Rick. And had I known about them, it would have put me in the middle one way or the other. But the fact is, I had a job to do, and my first, you know, uh, responsibility was to the company and doing my job. And, and and I think I was blessed in one one respect. I don't think Eric or Rick tried to include me, or so that I would have to take a side or or have a, a distinct opinion about what was going on. I just I, I think really it was none of my business, to be honest with you. Well, that's encouraging to hear. Um, I guess both guys probably realized you were in a bad spot. Let's talk about Eric Bischoff for a minute. Did you notice any change in Eric? I mean, Tony Schiavone has famously told the story that when Eric Bischoff went from just being an announcer, quote unquote, just an announcer to then being basically in control of WCW, he went to dinner, uh, with, and, and they took their wives to dinner and all four of them were out. And Tony says, you know, uh, you're going to change. And Eric insisted, no, I'm not going to change. I'm going to be the same guy. And Tony says, no, you're going to have to change. That's what this job requires. Did you notice a change in Eric Bischoff just day to day? Well, when we very first started, um, Eric was, and I don't say just an announcer because we know what great announcers bring to the product. They get the talent over, they get the product over. Um, and Eric from day one was very professional in the way he handled his duties as an announcer. He would set me up perfectly. He wouldn't try to, to, uh, steal the show or, or overshadow me. He set me up in a businesslike manner and I was able to do my job, which was to talk him in the building very easily. And I always appreciated that. And I always liked working with Eric, uh, in that capacity. It was a shock, but it was not in one respect. One information that I was privy to was Rick was telling me, hey, this Eric Bischoff is a smart guy. He's a go-getter. He's hungry. He's uh, he's gun-ho. I'm going to push for him to get the job as the boss. And uh, I think he's, you know, with the attitude that he has, he, you know, after some of the the executives that we had had in the past that were Turner executives who didn't understand our product really didn't want to be a part of our product, didn't like the product and didn't necessarily want it on the air period. Uh, this would have been a refreshing, you know, to have a wrestling guy, somebody in there that was backing wrestling. I want it on TV. I want it to get better. I want it to shine. And to me, it sounded like an incredible 